Welcome back. In this video, we will talk about the MAC address table that is a CAM table and how actually a CAM works and how we can defend against these attacks. So let's start with MAC address table. So first of all, the, what is that exactly a CAM? So CAM is nothing but the content addressable memory. So before starting that, we should know about the MAC that what exactly the MAC. So MAC is nothing but it's a media access control, which is also known as the physical address of a device. For example, uh, you might have the PC, you might have the laptop, you might have the you know mobile phone. Every device have a physical address that is media access control that is the MAC address. Every device have MAC address. Now MAC address have 48 bits unique identification number if you can see here 48 bits now these 48 bits are split in object unique identifier having 24 bits and 24 bit of network interface for NIC that is the network interface controller now here is one of the question let's say there is a one device and there is two NIC in that device what will happen is the MAC address is going to be same or different so the MAC address is going to be different guys why because we uh, we have the two uh, or you can say the multiple NIC cards and for both it is going to be different now if we can see here this is object unique identifier first octet second third and network interface card now seventh bit and eighth bit so seventh bit having the globally unique that is the zero if there is some zero globally unique if there is one it means locally administrated similarly for the eighth bit zero for unicast and one is for multicast now what what are the informations you can get through cam table you can get to know about the vlan that is the virtual lan the mac address the what exactly the type whether it's static or dynamic and the ports you can get to know through cam table now the question is how actually the cam works now if you can see in the diagram we have these mac address right we have mac1 and mac c port number one and three now mac b is missing now what exactly the MAC A wants? MAC A wants to connect or uh, send some information to B. Now what will happen? So MAC don't know the IP address or you can say the uh, MAC address of uh, B. So what it will do? So MAC A is sending the ARP for B. Now what is that ARP? ARP is address resolution protocol. The IP, whatever the IP, is assigned to a particular MAC address this information is done by ARP that is the address resolution protocol so it will go through this one right now here B is unknown and so what we are doing we are broadcasting it we are broadcasting it so that everybody can get the request that who is actually the B right so here we have the MAC B, we have the MAC C. Now here if you can see MAC B is saying that I am a MAC B. MAC B is saying I am at MAC B and MAC B is going to give respond to MAC A. And that's how this series is going to complete. And B is on port 2 and A is on port 1. So that's how actually a CAM works. Now the next thing, what happens when CAM table is full? So once the CAM table fills up on a switch, additional ARP request traffic flood every port on the switch. Now what will happen with uh, after this flood? The switch is going to, uh, it will change its behavior and it will react as a hub. So this attack also uh, fill the CAM tables of adjacent switches. Next one we have MAC flooding. 
so now what is that mac flood uh, mac flooding so mac flooding involves flooding of cam table with fake mac addresses now let's say in a cam table we have the cam table and there is huge number of mac address right but now what i am doing i am doing the bulk request of the mac addresses or you can say the fake addresses and ip pairs until it is full right so what will happen with the switch what will happen to this let's say uh, if you can see in this diagram source is mac we, i am just sending lot of fake mac addresses request so what is going to happen it is the cam is going to be full okay so after when once uh, the cam going to be full it will start flooding so due to that switch is going to react as a hub so whatever the information pc a going to send to pc b it is going to broadcast by the hub so attacker will get to know yeah this is the request is going from pc a to pc b so for mac flooding generally uh, people use mac uh, mac off which is a unix linux tool that is a part of ds uh, ds sniff collection and mac off also sends random source mac and ip addresses actually so through that you can uh, you can do the attack the next one we have switch port stealing now what is exactly it is so switch port stealing and sniffing technique use mac flooding to sniff the packets it generally uses the same pattern as the mac uh, mac flooding uses so attacker floods the switch with forced graduates arp packets with target mac address as source and his or own mac as destination a race condition of attackers flooded packet and target host packets occur and the switch has to change its mac address binding constantly between two different ports so generally if if in in very short if if i can tell you it is going to steal the ports right it is going to steal the ports this is what a switch port is stealing so if you can see when this for uh, let's say in this technique that attacker sends bogus arpd packet right and we have the host a we have the host a and it is forwarded to switch and the switch will update the cam table obviously when host a sends a packet switch will have to update it again this will create the winning race condition in which if the attacker sends arp with host a mac address the switch will send packets to the attacker assuming host a is connected to this post right so here we are stealing the port actually we are stealing the switch port now how to defend against mac address so the first thing is port security used to bind the mac address of known devices to the physical ports and violation action is also defined for example if there is a switch if there is a switch so whatever the things you know whatever the mac addresses you know only fill those things only fill those things and set a limit and similarly for the ip addresses similarly for the you know uh, pc devices so that no other devices is going to connect this is how it will work and in dynamic port security configuration switch to a specific number of allowed mac addresses mac addresses as i said there should be a specific number let's say you have the 40 40 uh, computer in your network there should be only 40 in your switch that should be configured by yourself so that's it in the video uh, in this video guys and we'll meet in the next video with DSCP attack.